Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting Lesson 1 for March the 6th, 2022 from our uh, Pathway uh, Adult Bible Studies. Uh, we begin our new unit today for our Spring Lessons. Uh, unit 1 entitled Liberating Passover and our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is the resources to rebuild. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Ezra chapter 2 verse 1 uh, verses 64 through 70. Our background scripture is taken also from the book of Ezra chapter 1 um, and then chapter 2 uh, verse 64 through 70 and we'll be studying today from the book of Ezra chapter 1 verses 1 through 8 verse 11 and the book of Ezra chapter 2 uh, verses 64 through 70. Our key verse reads <clears throat> when they arrived at the house of the Lord in Jerusalem some of the heads of the families gave free will offerings toward the rebuilding of the house of God on its site as taken from uh, Ezra chapter 2 uh, verse 68 from the NIV translation our lesson aims today number one is to examine the rebuilding plan for the temple in Jerusalem that God gave to King Cyrus secondly to rebuild and trust that God provides resources for the task he asks us to do and then thirdly to share situations in which believers will trust God's provision and act in faith. We have just two outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled preparing the house of God and then the second outline is entitled praise in the house of God and as always we give thanks to God for his many blessings that he have bestowed upon us we thank God for you uh, our listeners uh, certainly those of Pleasant Green and our partners we thank God for this privilege to be able to share God's Word with you uh, from this historical account uh, from the book of Ezra we certainly are praying for our country um, you just need to turn on your television uh, to see that we need the Lord uh, in a desperate way uh, and so we want to continue to pray uh, for different individuals who are being affected all over this world and at the close of our lesson today we're going to offer prayer for a healing uh, national healing if you will global healing if you will uh, not only for uh, the people of God but for our hearts and minds that we would turn our direction uh, to the one who was able to keep us from falling uh, as always we encourage you to get your Bible and be prepared to take some notes we want to share uh, quite a bit with you from our uh, lesson today this uh, beautiful lesson from uh, uh, history one of the 12 books of the Bible uh, devoted to the history of God's people and we want to be able to look back with the eye uh, to see what happened uh, to avoid some mistakes if you will from the past uh, historical account that the Apostle Paul would highlight for us I believe in 1st Corinthians chapter 10 we need to do our best to learn from history but I want to read just a little bit of the biblical context uh, from our adult quarterly uh, I want to read a little bit from uh, our lesson standard and then we're going to get into these two outlines. But the biblical context, uh, the book of Ezra like Ruth, Job, Esther and others is named after its principal character. Although the author is not mentioned and the narrative appears uh, uh, both in the first and third person Bible scholars commonly agree that Ezra uh, wrote the book uh, that bears his name. Uh, the book records the fulfillment of God's promise to the nation of Israel through Jeremiah 
to bring the people back to their homeland after 70 years of captivity. I want you to look at 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 21, of the book of Jeremiah chapter uh, 25, verses 11 and 12, and Jeremiah chapter 29, uh, verse 10, and also the book of Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. And then just a little bit from the uh, 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 our lesson standard concerning the biblical context. Uh, the text of Ezra tells the story of the Jewish people during the 6th and 5th centuries BC. Uh, in 586 BC, the Babylonian Empire, led by King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, laid siege to Judah and destroyed Jerusalem. You can see that in 2 Kings chapter 24, verses 10 through 14. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 25, verses 1 through 10. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 36 verse 17, the book of Jeremiah chapter 52 verses 4 and 5, and then verses 12 through 16. But the siege's uh, culmination was the destruction of the Jewish temple and the removal of its treasures. Uh, you'll see that in Second Kings uh, chapter 24 verses thir verse 13, Second Chronicles chapter 36 verse 18 and 19. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 52 verse 13 uh, the removal of the treasuries and the people of Judah was prophesied by Isaiah that's in 2nd Kings chapter 20 verses 16 and 17 so the Babylonians carried the people of Judah with the exception of the poorest individuals into captivity um, and so we want to just be able to uh, unpack this historical account uh, in a way that helps us to understand that uh, 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 for the sake of argument that these people, uh, Israel and Judah respectively, were in a covenant relationship with God. It's important that we underscore this because uh, uh, there were expectations uh, uh, laid at the feet of, of Israel and Judah uh, respectively of, of, of the requirements that God had given them through uh, uh, the law certainly and 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 certainly through the prophets uh, uh, when they appeared during uh, uh, Israel and Judah's time to help them to understand that they were falling short of the expectations they were not meeting uh, the intent uh, that God had for them when he brought them out with a mighty and an outstretched arm they were not fulfilling the requirements and, and, and one of the things that uh, if we went back to the book of Deuteronomy uh, one of the things that that God promised to do if Israel did not obey uh, uh, the covenant terms if you will was to allow their enemies to come up on them uh, and, and so there are two particular military campaigns that we want to be mindful of uh, uh, during Israel's uh, history we have the Assyrian uh, military campaign that was waged against Israel uh, uh, somewhere around 740 uh, BC and you can see some uh, uh, reference in the book of first Chronicles uh, chapter 5 verse 22 and then uh, the Babylonian campaign which is a part of our lesson today uh, uh, inflicted upon uh, Judah in 586 BC so you want to be mindful of those uh, 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 two military campaigns and there are reasons why that uh, uh, the children of Israel and, I, and I'm going this way with you church to help us to understand that uh, uh, what Judah lost what Israel lost uh, 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 was not only the physical attributes of, of their worship, and we're going to talk about that in this lesson, but something spiritual happened. And as I was uh, 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 studying this lesson, uh, the Spirit of the Lord was reminding me of why do we have revivals? Uh, this would be something that I want you to think about as we uh, engage this lesson today, because for me, it's, it's, it's the setting of a revival. Uh, we typically have revivals in, in, in our culture. Uh, 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 it, it refers to a sort of a spiritual 
reawakening, if you will, from a state of dormancy or, 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 or if we were stagnant uh, uh, in in our lives as believers. And so when there has been a, 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 a period, if you will, of, of spiritual decline, we seek to engage a revival. And so in many respects, a, a, a revival uh, sort of replicates the believer's experience when you got saved, right? So, so, so it is initiated by the prompting of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, and you might say, Reverend, why are you going in this way? Because when we get into the first outline uh, and, and we see the context of this lesson, I can see and the wording uh, 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 is certainly clear to me that the Spirit of God is at work on the inside of, uh, of, of leaders and individuals and moving them to uh, to get back to the place where they uh, 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 where they were before they uh, were taken into captivity, to get back to the terms of the covenant, to get back to the way, to the created order, if you will, uh, that God had established for his people, that they had fallen short. So as we look at this first outline, uh, preparing the house of God from the book of Ezra, uh, chapter 1, uh, uh, verses 1 through 8 and verse 11. I want you to think about that term, a revival, and we'll lift some things as we as we go along. But the Bible says, I want to read this from the NIV uh, uh, translation. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, watch this church, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus king of Persia to make a proclamation throughout his realm and he uh, and also to put it in writing so if we if we look at this uh, 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 passage here if we look at this scripture text uh, uh, from the King James Version it said now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia the, the that the word of the Lord came uh, by the mouth of of Jeremiah might might be fulfilled the Lord stirred up the spirit right he moved on the heart of King uh, 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 Cyrus king of Persia but the King uh, uh, James Version says uh, uh, there was something happening in the spirit in in the spirit or in the heart of this king God was working in his spirit and moving him verse 2 this is what Cyrus king of Persia said the Lord the God of heaven has given all the kingdoms of the earth he has appointed me to build a temple for him uh, uh, at Jerusalem in Judah verse 3 any of his people you see that any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem in Judah and build the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, the God who is in Jerusalem, uh, and may their God be with them. Verse 4, and in any locality where survivors may now be living, the people are to provide them with silver and gold and goods and livestock and with free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem. Uh, then the family heads of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and Levites, watch this, everyone whose heart God had moved, right? Still, God is working uh, in the heart of this king of Persia. God is working in the hearts of his people, and that's essential. And we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, prepare, uh, 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 what God was doing uh, here it goes on to say, prepare to go up to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. Verse 6, all their neighbors assisted them with articles of silver and gold and with goods and livestock and with valuable gifts in addition to all the free will offerings. Verse 7, moreover, uh, uh, King Cyrus brought out all the articles belonging to the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and had placed in the temple of his God. Verse 8, Cyrus king of Persia 
had uh, had them brought by uh, Mithridath the treasurer who counted them out to Shezbazer uh, the prince of Judah and then verse 11 uh, it says in all there were 5,400 articles of gold and uh, of silver Shezbazer brought all these along with the exiles when they came up from Babylon to Jerusalem so what does all of this mean right so so if we can just take a, a step back and look at the destruction uh, that 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 Judah witnessed in 586 BC and that the Lord had raised up uh, 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 the king King Nebuchadnezzar to go in and lay siege and to lay waste to Jerusalem uh, because of their disobedience because Judah didn't hearken unto the word of the prophets that came to them and God was uh, 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 telling them at that time to repent of what they were doing but they failed to do that so now they uh, uh, because God uh, decided to uh, pay them double according to their iniquities which equated to 70 years of captivity uh, uh, in Babylon and so King Nebuchadnezzar uh, uh, when I was reading this uh, he took everything he destroyed the the temple uh, 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 he took the people uh, Nebuchadnezzar he took the 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 articles if you will the gold and the silver and all of these things that that were in the house of the Lord and something else that he took Nebuchadnezzar he took the people's worship he took their spirit of worship if you have some time if you look at Psalm 137 you'll see exactly what I'm talking about uh, 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 and you will find that Judah lost the spirit of praise and I was thinking about how many times have we disobeyed God and lost the spirit of praise you could be in the house of the Lord but not have the spirit to praise God while you are in the house something has happened to you on the inside and I think it's noteworthy that God is moving first of all in the hearts of the of the king and he's moving into the hearts of the people that is where our praise begins it begins in us uh, it comes from a particular place but 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 Judah uh, for 70 years think about this church for 70 years of being in captivity and I, I just want to go over to uh, 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 the psalmist here and I, I want to read this uh, for us today because I, I think it will help us to sort of underscore the position that that Judah was in and why uh, uh, after this 70 years of captivity they are going back home to Jerusalem and they have to start over you know and and there are times in our lives where we need a do-over right we need the Lord to give us a second chance if you will to give us another opportunity but if you have your Bible uh, uh, if you look at the posture of Judah here in Psalm 137 and I just want to read a couple of verses here to underscore this uh, 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 verse 1 I want to begin there the Bible says by the rivers of Babylon there we sat down yea we wept when we remembered Zion watch this verse 2 we hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it uh, uh, and uh, for there those who carried us away asked us for a song and those who plundered us requested mirth saying sing us one of those songs of Zion verse 4 how shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land so not only were these individuals uh, that were taken into captivity uh, not only had they lost their praise but they were being they hung their harps on the trees if you will uh, uh, they were being tormented by those who uh, uh, 
took them uh, into captivity to sing them one of those songs, right? Sing us a praise song like you used to do when you were in Zion. And, 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 and you, can, you can imagine how they were being laughed at and mocked that they, they had been put in such a situation that now they had lost everything, including the spirit of praise. And they asked a question even of themselves, how are we going to sing the Lord's song in a strange land? We are in an unfamiliar territory and we don't even have the spirit of praise within us. We can't sing anymore. And this is something that we have to be mindful of as the people of God. This is something that we have to learn from this historical account that I don't care how saved you are. If we are not careful, if we are not mindful of the commandments of God, you will lose your praise. You will lose your spirit to praise. And so now preparations as we are reading now from Ezra chapter 1 verses 1 through 8 and verse 11 preparations are now going into effect to bring the praise back to put the praise back you know uh, uh, that 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 we might get back to the praise that we uh, uh, didn't have for 70 years right and so this is important that preparations from the top down so the lord has moved on the spirit of of this king of persia Osiris, God has uh, caused him and, and moved upon him the way in a way that he has made a declaration. He has put it in writing. He is putting the, the all of the tenets in place because we have to get to this praise. We have to get to this worship and it requires preparation, right? We shouldn't just throw something at God and say, God, take this, but we should prepare our hearts right and our minds for worship this we can do prior to going to church prior to, uh, prior to going into virtual service if you will because of this pandemic we need to prepare our hearts and minds uh, uh that when i was growing up the saints would say draw your minds in right draw your minds in because we're getting ready to get this praise and this worship because we are offering it it should be a, a, a mentioned that what we are offering to God goes under the heading of a sacrifice, right? And so if, if, if you want God to accept it, you should know how God is looking at the individuals who are offering uh, uh, this praise and this worship to him. God is looking according to 1 Samuel, I believe chapter 16 would help us to understand. God is looking at the heart of the individual uh, 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 who is offering him a sacrifice of praise. I would also encourage you to read Isaiah chapter 1 if you have time because many times we think that God just will accept anything uh, uh, because he doesn't have any place else to get it from and so we just throw God a praise and a worship not understanding that God was looking at the inside. This is why he is moving in the heart uh, 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 of this king and he is also moving in the heart of his people that is where the praise begin we are unctioned and we should be moving according to uh, the dictation of the Holy Spirit I hope this is making uh, sense for you today church but I would also encourage you to read John chapter 4 the gospel of John chapter 4 uh, 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 verses 21 through 24 you will understand that passage Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman uh, uh, saying that the time is coming and now is right and now is when the true worshipers will worship God in spirit right in spirit and in truth right and so this is where we have to uh, uh, provide uh, uh, some understanding here concerning this historical account because this is nothing new for God this is what he is still requiring of us today right that we do uh, that our motives are in in check that 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 we know why we are, are doing things and I know we could we could give a lot right we could give uh, 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 from our pockets we can give uh, all of these uh, 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 you know amounts of, of, of money and all of these different things 
but we are not impressing God. We should understand that. You are not impressing God. God is looking at why are you doing that? You could have a beautiful voice and sing a, 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 a praises unto God, but why are you singing? Me even as a preacher, I could preach like Paul and all these other folks, but what is the motive, right? And this is where God is looking, and this is what has caused uh, uh, Judah to go into captivity. And now that God has made a way out, I love this uh, uh, in verse 1, and then we'll move on Ezra chapter 1, talking about uh, 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 Cyrus here, uh, that God is moved upon this king to to uh, uh, make a proclamation. So what we are looking at in this first verse is a way out. Cyrus, by the Spirit of God, is providing a way out of this captivity. He is the instrument, if you will. He is the type of Christ, if you will, that has provided a way of escape. Right? And this is very important for us to understand. And so he made this proclamation throughout all of his kingdom. And he put it in writing that God gave him something to do. That God gave him some authority. And he was sending out an invitation. Isn't that beautiful? God is providing an invitation for us today to come out of the captivity that we may have gone into. God through Jesus Christ is offering us a way out. John chapter 14, right? Verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we need to be able to see this type of Christ in this passage. So when we talk about looking forward, we can, we cannot just throw this passage away because it's, it's historical or because we can't make sense of it. We can see the type of, of Christ in Cyrus. We can see the activity uh, uh, of God in this man because God has is, is telling us in his word that he is moving in this man's heart. Right. And so what is coming from Cyrus is actually coming from God. Right. I hope that makes sense for us today. And so uh, uh, God has the capacity to move on us at any time. Right. In any place. So God didn't uh, 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 let these people stay in captivity. This is the way out. This is the way that that I'm prescribing uh, 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 that you come out of this captivity and this is what this is how we are going to build the worship back right this is how we're going to put it back this is how we're going to prepare ourselves we're going to put everything back where it was and I love this about God church I just couldn't leave it alone because when you and I got saved I'll leave it here when you and I got saved God put us back in the created order he put us in the position that he wanted us to be in and the challenge and the charge for us is to stay in that position i heard jesus say these words in john chapter 15 he said abide in me right and my word abide in you we have to stay with god stay in the word of god so we can present a, 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 a pleasing sacrifice to the Lord. The word of God and our obedience to the word of God conditions us to be able to offer God a, a, a sacrifice of praise. It conditions us as clean vessels that we are holding up clean hands without wrath and without doubt. But when we disobey God and expect God to accept our praise we should read Jeremiah chapter 7 when you have time but I, I, I just could see God at work through Christ Jesus I wasn't there in Ezra's time but I'm here now looking at God doing the same identical thing preparing us for a praise that is pleasing to him 
preparing us for a worship that he gets the glory out of it and that we we are just instruments right we want to be able to make sure that we are not trying to share the stage with God we are not trying to rob him of his glory and his honor and his praise but but all of these tenets if you read all of this account in the book of Ezra you'll see exactly what I'm talking about but the question is asked in what ways can we help or can uh, that can help prepare the house of God for worship I believe I have underscored uh, uh, some things or at least to put you on a path but one of the things that I found in studying this lesson uh, that that Judah and Israel failed to grasp uh, 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 the, 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 the fact that God saved them for the rest of their lives. This was not a temporary deliverance, right? The covenants and the statutes and the ordinance that, that, that God gave them when he brought them out of uh, uh, Egyptian bondage were for their entire lives. It was to gauge uh, uh, the, the entire course of life. Uh, uh, in the book of Leviticus, if you studied that book, uh, I believe some 87 times in that passage, in that book of Leviticus, God tells his people to be holy. 87 times, right? So why is God continuously telling us the same thing over and over again? Because he wants us to understand the seriousness of the salvation that he has given to us and to help us to understand uh, that we are not of this world. We are in this world. This is something I want to read to you. This is Jesus talking in John chapter 17, beginning at verse 15. Jesus is praying for his disciples, and he says in verse 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not, watch this church, they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Verse 17, sanctify them, right? By your truth, your word is truth. So the problem with Judah, uh, 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 what happened to them, they were trying to mix into something that God had brought them out of. And that is our problem today. We are trying to, through, uh, to uh, even through compromise, to blend into something that we have been brought out of. You will never ever uh, uh, get God to help you go back into something that he brought you out of. It is God's intent, even through the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe in John chapter 16, to carry us into all the truth, right? We should not be going backward as though God had not brought us out. So this is the challenge and the charge for us today. I hope it makes sense. And also I want to give you uh, Ezra chapter 3 verse 11 it's not a part of the text but it is the key verse for this entire book talking about praising God and worshiping God I would also give you um, Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 through 3 as we read this talking about in this second outline praise in the house of God I want to read this from the NIV translation verses uh, uh, from chapter 2 verses 64 through 70 the Bible said the whole community the whole company numbered 42,360 besides their 7,337 male and female slaves and they also had 200 male and female singers verse 66 they had 736 horses 245 mules uh, uh, 435 camels uh, uh, and 6,720 donkeys. Uh, verse 68 says, When they arrived at the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, some of the heads of the families gave free will offerings toward the rebuilding of the house of God on its site. According to their ability, they gave to the treasury for this work 60, 61,000 derricks of gold, uh, 5,000 minus of silver, and a hundred priestly garments. Verse 70, the priests, the Levites, the musician, uh, uh, the gatekeepers, and the temple servants settled uh, in their own towns along with some of the other people and the rest of the Israelites 
settled in their towns. So, so, so all of these things represent sacrifices, right? Sacrifices to the building of this temple, to the building of the worship of God, to the building of the praise. In other words, church, everything we do, everything that we intend to do, everything that we intend to offer to God uh, uh, as a token of sacrifice needs to go to the edification of the glory of God. Everything that we do, everything that we intend to do should go for the praise of God that we might, uh, uh, if we are not doing it ourselves, that we need to be encouraging others to praise the Lord, right? And so this is why uh, 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 the Bible is helping us to unpack that this is coming from their free will, what they intend to do. This is coming from their free will offerings. Look at this, toward rebuilding the house of God on its site. This is the mandate for the church, right? It's not so much, uh, uh, but it is relevant when we talk about the physical building but if we if we if we spent all of the resources on a physical building and our lives were in shamble what kind of praise would we offer to god if we decorated the entire physical structure of our churches with all gold but the people uh, 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 were intended to obey the covenant challenge and charge of god what kind of praise would that be do you think God would accept it? Uh, uh, Solomon's account would tell you and all of the things that he built uh, 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 to, to God uh, that God uh, uh, told him. If you read uh, 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 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and 2 Chronicles chapter 7, I believe verse 14 we like to quote all the time. But the Lord has specifically told that man at that time, if you don't walk up right before me, I'm just paraphrasing here, the way your father David did, right? I'm going to tear all of this down. So this is how God moves. God doesn't want this outer thing to be so elaborate, but his people's lives and their, uh, 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 are in shambles in terms of the, the, the covenant responsibilities that we have. So it doesn't matter how decked out we might be right how decorated we might make all of these things god is looking at the motives and the intentions of our heart so repentance is a great instrument right this is something god was telling uh, uh, israel and and judah respectively to do if you want to get back into the worship and the praise that i prescribe repent of your shortcomings right repent of the thing that i'm telling you that you have done to provoke me to anger i'm not asking you did you do it i'm telling you through the prophets that this is what i have seen and this is why and so we have to make sure church especially in a day like uh, uh today in a culture that we're living in that we keep our praise to god don't lose the spirit of praise and you can keep the spirit of praise through obedience unto God. And if you feel yourself weakening and, and short of the mark, God will quicken you the same way he did in this Old Testament account on the inside. Uh, uh, God has a way of moving on our hearts and, and unctioning us in a way that, that he will get the glory out of it. So uh, uh, I didn't read that there was any pushback or any fight back uh, uh, against the spirit of God, right? There was no, it didn't appear to me that there was any quenching of the spirit uh, in, in Cyrus or in the people because the Bible is telling us their free will was involved. So they were following and moving according to the dictation of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, church, this is so uh, uh, such a beautiful lesson but we do need a revival right we do need a revival when we have had a spirit of decline right 
we do need to come back to what we have walked away from. We need to make sure that if you were uh, 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 singing praises unto God that you're still doing that, that you're still walking up right before God. Uh, uh, and sure, we have times where we uh, fall short of the mark, but we don't stay there because God wants this praise. Can you imagine being in captivity for 70 years as these people were and as soon as they are uh, offered an opportunity, everybody didn't uh, want to be a part of this. And that's fine if that's your choice. But God has prescribed a way through Jesus Christ that there is a way out. And what God will do will bring you in, translate you into the body of Christ so we can all be about our Father's business. I hope, trust, and pray, church, that this lesson has been a blessing for you as it has been a blessing for me. We need to stop and pray. Uh, as we said earlier, we want to pray for global healing today. Uh, something needs to take place. I know we are trying to, to get peace on the outside, but don't leave out the inside. We do need peace in our hearts and in our minds. Father, in the name of Jesus, I offer this prayer and this sacrifice. God, in the name of Jesus, that you would hear it now and that you would move on our hearts today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we need a global healing today. Uh, we need global peace today. We need something to, to happen to our hearts and minds. You, we need something to happen down on the inside that would cause us, oh God, to be better on the outside. We need the love of God in our hearts that we might stop abusing and, and harming and even killing one another. In the name of Jesus, Father, bless us with the spirit of praise. Bless us with the spirit of loving kindness. Bless us, oh God, with the spirit of humility. Bless us with the spirit of repentance, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We need you desperately today and this lesson just unpacks us today and helps us to understand that many of us have lost our spirit of praise we have fallen short to give you the glory the honor and the praise circumstances have caused us to to go in our shell and we don't even have a mind to say thank you jesus but we rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would give us hearts and minds and quicken us right now in the name of Jesus to love one another from the inside to the outside. In the name of Jesus, look on our families today in a special manner. Somebody listening today is sick today. Somebody's been affected, oh God, by circumstances today. We are all going through something today. But the same God in this text is the same God who is at work today. And we call on you today, God, to fulfill your promises, not just on the outside of us, but on the inside of us. Draw us near, oh God, to the word of God and help us to understand that you are requiring God, that we repent. You're requiring that we walk up righteously before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you for the way out uh, in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the sacrifice that he made, the shedding of his blood, the preciousness of his blood that, that's been poured out for many, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We lift up each and every family today, every church door that is open in your name, in the mighty name of Jesus, every pastor and teacher and leader in the name of Jesus, every child today in the name of Jesus, God, every believer today in the name of Jesus, Jesus. We lift up those who are sick and shut in today. We lift up those who are locked up in prisons today, not just physical prisons, oh God, but the devil has blinded their eyes and locked them in prison, oh God, that they can't praise you. But we rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will continue to anoint us with fresh oil. That we might offer a, a, a praise that is, that is pleasing, oh God, that our sacrifices might be accepted by you, O oh God, because you are a holy God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word. It is true. We will continue to bless your, your name, not just now, but forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. Just know that I love you today. I'm praying for us all that the Lord will continue to bless us and keep us even as we see the day drawing nigh. So until such time that the Lord will 
uh, permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.